This is the Parent Life Podcast, and I'm Jason Stanley. This week I want to discuss the topic of raising adults. So here's what I mean by that. A lot of times as parents, we often think about raising children. Um, This is good because we do have children and we are raising those children, but ultimately we don't want them to stay children. So what we end up doing is we're actually raising them to become adults. That's kind of the blessing of having done parenting the right way. Otherwise, they might live with you forever, right? So we spend a lot of times as parents with our children, preparing them to even do children things like play and stuff like that. But what we don't do is we don't spend enough time with them in becoming adults. Now, again, this is done more in the different phases and stages of life, but in general, we have to have a better mindset of raising adults. Now, we used to do this naturally with our kids in America. Um, there were built-in methods for raising children to become adults. So, for example, there was the family farm or the family business. Growing up, children worked and contributed to the family. They had chores, right? And this was necessary so the family could grow. A father could plant more if he taught his son how to plow, and that meant more money for the family. The daughters would have a garden because that kept the family from having to buy produce. There was no retirement plan. There was no Medicare. That wasn't even an option. Social Security did not even exist. And so the retirement plan in these days was you had a parent who would teach their child. Their child would take over the business of the farm. And then the parent who becomes the grandparent now living in his retirement is now living off of the produces of that farm or business while teaching the new grandchildren all the ways of the master and how to do things. So, this was essentially that strategy. So, uh, author Johnny Derwin wrote it this way. At 17, your great-grandfather likely plowed all day behind a mule and then went home to help with the baby. Your great-grandmother worked just as hard and just as competently. At 16, she would have washed clothes by hand with soap she had made, cooked from a fire she had built, roasted chickens she had raised herself, took care of the children, planted her own garden, and still had time to care for her husband. Both performed well in their roles because adults had invested years of preparing them for just that. And so see, by ages 17 and 16, we were raising as a culture adults. World War II, our country moved away from its agrarian roots and became more industrial. The Industrial Revolution obviously took place in the early 1900s, but because of the war effort, things began to change, and families moved off of farms and into into cities at a much more stable and consistent rate. So, that means children now had much more time on their hands because they were not working in the family farm or family businesses. So that's whenever sports began to really take off in our country. Um, You all of a sudden had every school had football, basketball, baseball, field and track. That became a much more steady program. Um, Now there's even tons of options as students have gained even more free time. Boy Scouts of America uh, originally began in 1910, but it had a period of dramatic growth in the 50s and 60s, again because the culture had changed. I want to give you some thoughts about this change. And we're going to go to Luke 15 to discuss the parable of the prodigal son. Uh, We're not going to read the whole passage together. You can do that. But um, Jesus tells the story and he says there's a man who had two sons, the younger and the older. The older son was diligent and worked hard and was happy to contribute to the family farm, family business. The younger, not so much. So one day the younger comes to the father and says, I want my inheritance now, which in their culture is just crazy. The idea that a child could even ask that because essentially he's telling his dad, you're better off to me dead because I just want my stuff. Now, the crazy part is the dad actually gives it to him. So, You have this uh, young man who then takes all of his money, his inheritance, and goes and squanders it all. He squanders it on wild, crazy living, uh, but of course he becomes 
poor because he burns through all of his money and then he has to hire himself out to a pagan culture to feed their pigs and for the Jewish culture that is horrible. And so of course at this point all the listeners are just kind of blown away by this story yet at the same time they're thinking in their minds good that son deserved that for saying his father was worthless to him. So but when the young man comes to his senses he returns home thinking that a slave or a hired hand that worked for the father had it better off than he did. So he humbled himself, went back and had rehearsed all the way home. When he gets there, the father sees him and instead of judging him or asking, why are you back? The father runs to meet him. And in their culture, just so you know, that's not a, um, that's not a doable thing with their garments that they would wear. He would have had to hike up his garments, letting his exposed legs and undergarments be shown for everybody so that he could run to see his son. Uh, as soon as he sees his son, the son starts with his, uh, with his rehearsed bit, but of course the father shuts him down and says, quickly, get him a robe, get him a ring, kill the fatted calf. calf. We're going to celebrate because this is my son who is dead and is now alive. And they began to celebrate. Uh, now, his older son was in the field, and when the son comes back, the older son finds his younger son has returned and that they're having a party. He's indignant and angry because he believes that the father should not be doing something like this. Uh, he says things like, Look, these many years I've served you, and I've never disobeyed your command, yet you never gave me a young goat, much less the fatted calf, that I might celebrate with my friends. So he's, he's jealous. He feels like he's been mistreated, right? So when Jesus tells this story, there are, of course, the three main characters, the father, the older son, and the younger son. The father represents God. The younger son represents those who have rebelled against God. And the older son uh, represents those who are religious and they've obeyed God, but they've also missed just the truth of the gospel, that Jesus will forgive anybody. Um, and that there is no perfectly good person. You cannot work your way into God's love. So, let me give you three lessons that I've actually taken from a Truett Cathy book and want to kind of repackage for you about parenting and raising adults from this passage. First off, look at the parent who gave his son what his son asked for. He gave everything to his child. Um, a lot of times we're more amazed about the fact that this son squandered everything and wasted it, but I'm just as interested and amazed in the father who would give it to him, who would actually let him have all of that before he was ready, because again, this is the younger brother, before he was prepared, and of course, what did he do? He squandered it all. Many parents, they don't prepare their kids for adulthood because they never hold them accountable when they're children. They let them have whatever. Whenever the kid says, hey, I want this or I want that, rather than teaching them patience or making them work for it or earn it, which is something that adults have to do, they just give it to them. So, rather than teaching them obedience and patience to the, to the father, this father just let him have everything. So, uh, recently I heard a very prominent youth speaker. I was at a conference and he was telling a story about how his um, daughter came across some material that is not okay on the iPad. Um, it was adult content. Well, what, was I, what I was more interested in is the fact that he had given his daughter a di an iPad, let her go to her room, had not put any parameters on the iPad, and so he was talking about how easy it is to find, to which I was like, well, yeah, of course it's easy to find. You gave her full limitless access. What do you think was going to happen? And for parents who are trying to raise adults, not children, you're trying to raise adults, parameters are actually okay. Because by giving them parameters, you teach them boundaries, you teach them healthy, you teach them good decisions where they can improve their lives. In the same step, I also remind you that one day they're going to be grown, right? It says train up a child in the way they should go, and when they are, I like to say, grown, 
they will not depart from it. You have to realize that one day, this little sixth grader with an iPad or a iPhone will go their own way. And you have to teach them what solid parameters are, knowing that one day it's going gonna, it's gonna to be there. Second lesson I would like to pull is the parent who let his child hit rock bottom. So if you have the first parent who just gives his child everything, the second is the one who did not bail his son out. Too often, uh, we as parents do not prepare our children for adulthood because we do not prepare them for um, dealing with consequences. Instead, we bail them out every chance we get all the way as, as we are uh, allowing them to grow up and they run into a bit of trouble and immediately we swoop in uh, maybe it's called helicopter parents or lawnmower parents whatever you want to do there and we save them we rescue them every time now I'm not saying that you shouldn't rescue them sometimes that's part of the lessons for them to grow and you know obviously if they're in way over their head then you swoop in and you rescue them but if they're not learning consequences that their choices have consequences that's a major phrase for me in my household is choices and consequences then they're never going to learn not to make the mistakes that lead to bad consequences really what you want to do is allow your child to make small mistakes that have small consequences so that by the time they reach adulthood they know that big mistakes can come with big consequences. So, um, uh, for example, a friend of mine, uh, when we both had little kids, his name was John, and his son wanted to eat ice cream every night. Would not even eat dinner because he wanted ice cream. And so John thought, well, instead of trying to fight him every night, I'm actually going to let him deal with the consequences of his decision. So he goes and gets a gallon of Bluebell, vanilla ice cream and his son kicking and screaming won't eat his food decides to give him ice cream and he just gives him ice cream and gives him ice cream and gives him ice cream until his son is sick and miserable after that his son was more interested in eating regular food than ice cream now I'm not necessarily advocating that method but sometimes consequences can teach the lesson way better than what we as parents can here's the third lesson the parent who loves his child more than things, more than stuff. Half of this father's uh, inheritance, his, his total wealth, his total um, value was just squandered. It was gone. Imagine half of your retirement blown by your son, and there's no way to get it back. It's gone forever. And yes, you would be very hurt. You would be very upset. You would be very frustrated and angry. But nonetheless this father welcomed the son back immediately. This is something we have to teach in order for our kids to become adults. If they stay young and petty, they will be cruel and they will not learn how to forgive. Forgiveness is incredibly a spiritually mature thing. And if we want our kids to become adults, we have to teach them the principle of forgiveness, that people are more valuable than things. People are more valuable than stuff and money and things like that. So Bob Barnes in Ready for Responsibility has given us some practical steps for how we can walk our kids through this. So he says to use the ICE method, I-C-E. He says instruction, consequence, and experience, I-C-E. Try to teach them these things ahead of time. You instruct them. If they can't listen to instruction, then you let them have consequences. If they will not learn from their consequences, then you're just going to have to let them have some life experience, and that's hard. But then you can turn it around backwards and have conversations with them. So for experience, what did you learn? Consequence, how did you learn? What was the consequence that taught you your lesson? And I remember what I told you. Now, that that can go terribly wrong because you don't want to say, I told you so. But you can say, hey, I'm not telling you I told you so, but remember I warned you because I love you. So, 
Think of it this way when you're raising adults, and this is where we conclude. There are different learner's permits in life. Now, the main one, obviously, that we all know about is driving. If you want to learn how to drive, which um, comes with very devastating consequences and can lead to some very awful life experiences, you need a learner's permit. Well, there's a lot of other things that can become learner's permits as you are raising your kids. You can use that ICE strategy. You can allow them to learn by you giving them instruction, dealing with their consequences, and then, if need be, their experience. So grooming, teach your son to shave. Uh, money, again, instruct them, but sometimes allow them to deal with the consequences. Homework, that's a great one. So they show up and they don't have their homework or they left their lunch at home and forgot to uh, bring their lunchbox to school. You could swoop in and bring the lunchbox up there, or you could let them be hungry and allow them to learn from the consequences. Uh, dating, college, their career, all these things are, are incredibly effective tools in raising adults. Because again, the goal is not to raise your children. Your goal is to raise adults who have children one day, and then God willing and Lord bless, you get to have grandchildren one day. But if you don't start living for that day now, you may not get it. Thank you for listening to the Parent Life Podcast today. If you have any questions about me and my ministry, you can go to jasonstanland.com. For more information about Fruit Cove Baptist Church and her ministries, please go to fruitcove.com. Uh, the links are in the description and the bios. If you would like to submit a question or response to the podcast, you can email me at parentlife, all one word, at fruitcove.com. May you be filled with the knowledge of His will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. Colossians 1.9 See you next week.